Let's look at the molecular orbital description of several atoms going across the periodic table. We'll go from boron to neon and form the diatomic molecules and look at how they look in a molecular orbital description. When you start with boron, we'll take boron and we'll take the p orbital contributions only to the molecular orbitals. Of course, boron has 2s and 2p atomic orbitals, but for all of these, the 2s give you a sigma and a sigma star both completely full. So those don't contribute to the bond order. Sigma s and sigma s star cancel each other out. So we'll just look at the p contributions to the molecular orbitals. So boron has one p electron. It has a 2p electron. We can find that 2p electron, one from each boron, and put it into the molecular orbitals. So two electrons in the molecular orbitals. Here's boron. The lowest energy molecular orbitals are the pi bonding orbitals. One in each, we predict that boron would be paramagnetic, unpaired electrons, and we would predict boron, B2 the molecule, would have a bond order of one. Two bonding electrons, no antibonding electrons, so two divided by two is one. We can do the same thing with carbon. Now, two p electrons, carbon one step over from boron. So I have one p electron, or two p electrons from each carbon for a total of four going into my molecular orbitals. And when I put in four electrons to my molecular orbitals, I get a diamagnetic carbon molecule with a double bond. Four bonding electrons divided by two, bond order two. Continuing to nitrogen. I get nitrogen with a triple bond. Two, four, six electrons all in bonding orbitals gives me a bond order of three for nitrogen, which, as you know, corresponds to the Lewis electron dot structure for nitrogen, a triple bond. Oxygen, we would predict, would be paramagnetic from this. Now, as we go across the periodic table, the lower energy orbitals are going to switch here. The sigma bonding orbital becomes the lower energy as I go across the periodic table. And you might predict that. These molecular orbitals are formed from linear combinations of atomic orbitals. And you have to do the mathematical calculation and calculate the energies. And you know the orbitals change as you go across the periodic table. Atomic radii decrease. So the character of the individual atomic orbital changes, and the character of the molecular orbitals that result changes. When we give these orbital configurations, and it's necessary for you to know them, we'll make it very clear which orbital designation you should use. So oxygen has two unpaired electrons. Oxygen is paramagnetic. We can go ahead to fluorine. For the Lewis electron dot structure for fluorine, we'd predict a single bond. Does the molecular orbital theory predict that? Well, one, two, three, four, five, six bonding electrons minus one, two, three, four antibonding electrons is two. Divided by two gives you a bond order of one. And the final element, neon, we take the six electrons in the p orbitals for neon, 12 total, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. We populate the molecular orbitals, calculate the bond order, and you can see there's an equal number of bonding and antibonding electrons for a formal zero bond order. So what we have is our molecular orbital theory predicting neon would not form a bond. It would have a bond order zero. So our understanding of the periodic table of neon being an element that's particularly unreactive is reinforced by quantum mechanical molecular orbital theory.